Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to the FAQ video, where I'm going to answer a few questions you might have about this series. Starting with, what on earth is this series about? And this series is chiefly about software rendering, and that is the act of generating 3D images with nothing but software, without delving into your fancy GPU and saying, okay, GPU, do all the magic for me. Just going in, plotting pixel by pixel, and creating a 3D image that way. And that's what this particular series is going to be about. We're going to start with the basics and just create one of the most basic 3D effects of all time, the 3D star field. And from there, we're going to slowly start building and advancing throughout all the different 3D techniques until we get a fully general 3D system like what your graphics card might do. And that's what this series is about and what we're going to do in this series. Question 1. What on earth is the point of doing software rendering? I mean, the GPU already does a whole bunch of this stuff, so why would you not want to use a GPU for it? And a lot of the times, you do want to use a GPU for it. But there are still a few instances where you might be interested in doing a bit of software rendering. And one of the reasons you might want to do that is for simplicity. If you want to use a GPU, you're going to have to go through OpenGL or DirectX and do a whole bunch of different setup to get something working. And sometimes you just don't want to do that. And sometimes what you're doing is so simple that it's just easier to write out the code yourself rather than having to wrestle the GPU into doing it. So that's one reason you might use software rendering. Another reason you might use software rendering is just for educational purposes. A lot of the really interesting details about what makes 3D work is just completely hidden behind the GPU. And in a lot of ways, that can be a good thing, because if you don't have to worry about all the details of what exactly makes 3D, you can just worry about making your particular application. But then, if you never figure out what really makes 3D happen, you never understand how or why what you're doing is really making something that convinces your eye that it's seeing a 3D image. So that's, in my opinion, is probably one of the biggest reasons you might be interested in doing software rendering at least once, just to really understand on the deepest level what makes 3D graphics actually be 3D. And one more reason that it it's true, but it's sometimes overlooked, is for offline rendering purposes. In a fair number of offline rendering applications, they will not use a GPU. And the reason for this vary. Sometimes it's because of slight differences in drivers can make it generate slightly different images. Sometimes it's because it's just cheaper to buy more CPUs than it is to buy more GPUs. But at the end of the day, a, a fair bit of offline rendering work is done on the CPU. So if you're interested in doing any offline rendering stuff, well, for one, you probably wouldn't be using these techniques specifically, but who knows, maybe this could be sort of a starting point for working into that. So, just thought I'd... that's probably the least of the reasons, but hey, it's there. Question 2. What will I need to follow along? And there's a couple things you'll need. First off, I should mention that I'm going to be writing this software renderer in Java. Why Java? Because it's just about the only programming language that allows you to create something like this in a cross-platform manner, at least without linking to 10 million different libraries. So I'm going to be writing this in Java. So if you want to follow along in Java, you're going to need to have the JDK, the JVM, basically you're going to need Java installed on your computer, and you'll probably want a Java IDE, like Eclipse or NetBeans or IntelliJ, something like that. So, you'll need that. Other than that, I will be expecting you to have at least some programming experience. 
This is not intended for people who are writing their first programs ever. If that's you, you should probably go check out something like the New Boston or something, or some place where there's tutorials for people who've never written programs before. And that, that'll be my recommendation. So, yeah, and that's just about all you really need to follow along. Question 3. How is this series going to affect other series you're doing, like the 3D Physics Engine series? And this is not really going to affect those at all. I'm going to be doing this series as a side series, much like I did the intro to Modern OpenGL series as a side series. That means I'm going to be posting one, maybe two videos a week at most, and even then, only if I have the time to actually record them. If it gets in the way of real life, or the 3D physics engine, or whatever my main series is, it's... well, the video's not going to come out that week. It's, this is just sort of an extra thing I can record when I have more time for recording than usual. So, that's how this series is going to work. So, that's just about all I wanted to cover in this video. And, thank you. If there's... If you have any other questions that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to ask them in the comments, and I will personally come in and try my best to answer them for you. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you when the series starts. Thank you, see you then.